I certainly don't feel guilty about being a Republican. I've always been a Republican. My father is, his father was. The whole family is a Republican family. I was a Goldwater girl. I mean, really, we used to wear, you know, little banners which said Goldwater girl. As I was vocally a Republican and for Senator Goldwater. But when we come to Senator Goldwater, now it seems to me we're up against a, a very different kind of a man. This man scares me. I can give you a little information on my convictions at this point. I must honestly admit to you that I am not for a vote for Mr. Goldwater. And I don't think any Negro and white person of goodwill will vote for Mr. Goldwater. Now, maybe I'm wrong. A friend of mine has said to me, listen, just because uh, a man sounds a little irresponsible during a campaign doesn't mean he's going to act irresponsibly. You know that theory that the White House makes the man. I don't buy that. It, uh, Goldwater is a man who's not capable of hiding his racist uh, tendencies, and at the same time, he's not capable of even pretending to Negroes that he's their friend. I wish I was as sure that Goldwater is against war as I am that he's against some of these other things. I wish I could believe that he has the imagination to, to be able to just shut his eyes and picture what this country would look like after a nuclear war. President Johnson on November 3rd. The stakes are too high for you to stay home. Those television shows that he did, the girl plucking the daisy and then the bomb blows up, that started all of this dirty 10-second advertising that you're seeing on television. And it's not only permeating the, uh, the uh, presidential scene, but I look at... Uh, television shows in other states it's down to the senate house level mm -hmm. liberty augury the life and death of Barry goldwater in the 1960s politics was set on fire by a revival of old smear tactics that effectively galvanized voters delivered with the lightning speed that television provided this use of advertisement would forever change the legacy of political campaigns and came to be the foundational legacy of one particular individual in the Republican Party, Barry Goldwater. Born 1909 in the Arizona Territory, Goldwater enjoyed spending his time taking photographs and operating amateur radio. Later in life, he would be world-renowned for his photography, noting that at one time he had more than 15,000 negatives and some 25 miles of film. Goldwater's extensive understanding of technology allowed him to improve and assist in the daily communication during the Vietnam War, noting that his ham radio call numbers of K7UGA had become one of the best known in the world. His close proximity to the Hopi Reservation near Phoenix sparked his curiosity of the local people, inspiring him to collect more than 400 Kachina dolls, which are now on display at Phoenix's Heard Museum. The collection of Kachina dolls is comprehensive, containing artifacts dating back to as early as the late 19th century. In 1941, Goldwater joined the United States Army, later leaving only to commit himself to the United States Air Force. His legacy in the United States Air Force was deeply impactful, as he would both found and desegregate the Arizona Air National Guard two years prior to the official desegregation of the United States military. Goldwater would later remark that over a 60-year period, he flew over 7 million miles, logging over 15,000 hours in the cockpit. General Goldwater, did you fly her in all the way, sir? Oh, yeah. Goldwater would use his flying expertise to not only further his political ambitions, but also to help Arizona natives who were in need of assistance. Referring to some of the nastier Arizona winters of the 20th century, Goldwater stated that he would, quote, collect food and hay and drop them to Indian families and cattle cut off by snowdrift. During his time in the United States Senate, he would champion the rights of Arizona Native Americans, even receiving the name Chis Chili, meaning curly-haired one, from the Navajo people. Goldwater cherished the tribe so much that he would receive a tattoo on his left hand that identified him with the Native American Smoky Dancers. This tattoo was so important to Goldwater 
that it would be embossed on a statue in the United States Capitol Museum.